They be like, man, why are you so good? What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Best Tower Crane channel on YouTube. Yeah, I'm coming up. Please, if you like my videos and have watched them before, like, subscribe. It really helps me out. Thank you so much. Copy that. Today we got a really special video for you guys. We are pouring a vertical concrete. That bucket is totally full. We got a great truck placement. It's a really short trip from the truck to where we're pouring. And you can see all that vertical rebar. It is sticking up probably a good 10 feet from the form work. So I'm really gonna have to rely on my guy on the radio to help me with that last little bit, placing the bucket exactly where it needs to be to fill up uh, all the form. Look at that team, beautiful. Coming down a couple feet. This is a thick wall, I mean, look at all that bracing. Holy moly. One more foot. Hold mine there and then we'll get one shot out. Listen for that trolley, you see that? That is beautiful. In situations like this where it's really tough to get that bucket in there we're gonna be using the chute which just helps you you know get into a tight spot because that bucket is big and I don't have much clearance between these bar zones almost done pouring here all clear. all clear so I'm taking off I always go slow at the start Things can get snagged, ropes can get snagged, anything can get snagged. And as I'm in the clear, I send it away. Look at all those lock blocks holding those form work together. It's a really thick wall, so you gotta brace it good. We're gonna go back down to the bottom of the key. Now, if you guys are wondering what that clicking is, that is the speed of the hoist. So the faster the frequency of the clicks, the faster the hoist is going up or down. So that's cable up or down. Copy that. Now the driver's doing a really good job here. We get that bucket down and he's just filling it up. He's really sending it out of his chute into our bucket because he knows we're trying to be very efficient with the pour. Coming up. Always go slow when you take the weight initially. Can't go from zero to five grand in a couple clicks. Take it slow, baby. Start slow, you increase to your maximum speed, and then as you're coming in, you slow again. But halfway should be your max speed. At least on the swing, anyways. This is just general rules, of course. But that is almost always true. this section here, this mid section. So that's a miscommunication. He told me something different before. The first one or the big one? Uh, the big one. So the, this one here. Closest to you, I guess. Yeah, I see it. So I was looking for him there and I found him. Now I'm going to have to trolley in to this big section gap where you see the boys. Uh, so as you can see, I got vertical rebar going, you know, up quite a bit. You have to be very careful not to have any swing. Yeah, looking good there. Come on down. Hands on the rope. Four feet. Hands on the scoop. Another three feet. And I'm looking good right there. 
but ultimately I'm relying on the guys on the ground to help me get in there safely. A good way to think about it is, you know, I'm driving the crane from the truck to the formwork and my route is on me, my height is on me, I can ask guys for help, but ultimately it's all on me, but that last five feet, that last ten feet maybe, depending on if it's a tight spot, that's on the guy on the ground, you know, I'll only get so close. And then at, at one point, you know, you gotta be directing the crane and telling the crane exactly what you want. Or at least you should. It works a lot better if you do do that. There's a hold call from my guy on the ground there. Wait for it to swing over. Swing away a little bit, but now the angle's swinging back. Beautiful, nice soft landing right in the spot so the driver's chute comes up. Beautiful. Coming up. You can see the camera shake a little bit. That's how hard that crane is working. My guy on the ground gives me the heights good. I really like that. It's not something you always have to do, but if you're a ground guy, you know, for the first, if you're doing a big pour like this, where you're gonna be going through, you know, eight trucks or something, if you do it on the first truck, it's good. And after that, he'll know. See right there, he's giving me that hand signal, saying down to down, he likes it to down. Hand signals are really great. I even prefer them more than the radio. The one thing you must make sure is that the, the operator can see you. See how he's moving his hand over here? Because he knows that if he does it over here, I won't be able to see. So you have to make sure that the operator can see your hand. He's sticking his chicken wing way out, doing a great job. Where's my guy? Pretty chill job, right? And you get to wear your sweats, got some slippies on. Yeah, you gotta climb 200 plus feet every day. But once you're up here, if it's a nice day, I mean, you got a climate controlled office in the middle, you know, high up in the clouds. It's a nice view. Yeah, they're working that bucket. And I am looking nice and comfy today, aren't I? I knew that I was gonna be pouring concrete for the majority of the day. And so I was prepared. That's it, baby. Obviously I don't walk on a site looking like that. <laughs> I obviously have my PPE on and then I change once I get to the cab. So that's a really great thing that the placer just did. As I'm leaving, he lets me know, hey, we're coming back to this exact same spot. That's a little hint saying, I want you to know how to get right back here. So take a look at your computer, take a look at your numbers, and make sure you can get right back here. See, I already know where I'm going after I fill up. It's just great knowledge. You always wanna let your operator know where you're going next. That was a bit of a ran random effect there that I did, but I got a new computer, so I'm experimenting a little bit, trying to up the quality of the content for you guys. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys, you know, have anything that you want to know specifically about this pour or any other pour, 
or you want me to shut up and not narrate and just let you watch in peace, you know, drop it in the comments, let me know what you think. Or if you want other types of content, you know, just let me know in the comment section. And please like this video, subscribe, turn your notification bell on. I know I honestly I hate to ask, but you kind of have to, fortunately. Bangarang, look at that, the bucket hitting the rebar zones. Oh no. Don't worry, that's alright. It's just a little tickle. I got not very much weight in the bucket. And yeah, I mean it's you know, it's okay to be rubbing. Rubbing is racing is what they say. Oh yeah. Take a shot in and then a shot to your left. What is concrete? Concrete is a chemical reaction which induces stress. You get damn right. Going to the ramp, but I'm going to the body here to help me out. There was another Sorry. good call by my guy on the ground. Because as you can see, when I'm swinging, the truck is no longer there. That truck was empty. That's why I did not have a full bucket. And as soon as I'm done pouring, he lets me know, hey, I'm over at the ramp. Meet me there. Hmm. How many more trucks we got? A few? Two? Two, maybe three. As a guy on the ground, you want to let your operator know as soon as possible where he's heading so he can get his trolley set or if he's on a luffer he can get his boom set so he can start thinking and you know making it happen In information needs to be communicated as early as possible and also as efficiently as possible i'm not telling a, i'm not saying that you got to spill your guts to this guy you want to be as concise as possible but communicate as early as possible. As much information as early as possible in the least amount of words. That is what you're going for. Okay, don't get excited, Steve. Two, maybe three more trucks. Just gonna ask how she's going over there. I mean, it's going good, but the service has been horrible. And Eli told me it was 20 minutes spacing on the trucks. We could have kept up if that was the case, but. No, uh, you waited like 30 minutes after that first one. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. <sighs> well, there's another one coming in right now, though. Trucks pull it in, baby. I only say it's always to wash it. Yeah, just. Blast the shoot good? As long as the shoot's good, we should be alright. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's going pretty good. It's our time of day when I realize everyone wants to go home. So the next truck is coming in. My guy was just uh, rinsing the bucket. If Even if there's a break between trucks and you let the concrete dry a bit, it can make the shoot harder to work with. So it's always good practice whenever you have the chance to spray that bucket off. And on this pour, we're using the chute essentially the whole time because it's really hard to get the bucket in tight and right over top of the wall. So, you know, if we're waiting on a truck, let's wash out that chute to make sure the concrete flows nice and smoothly for the guys that are placing it in the wall. Now you can 
see that I didn't come off of my swing very good there. My bucket's going left, it's going left, it's going left. And it's coming back to the right now. So there's a bit of a swing into it. And one of the tricks that I use is the shadow. You see that shadow on the ground? I can use that as a trick to tell how close I am. But my guy puts his hands on the bucket and helps me out. And I'm good to go. Not so much swing anymore. Come up a touch, bud. He's pointing to the right, which means he wants it that way. Simple directions, pointing in the, the direction you want the operator to move it. And that was a head nod. You can see right there, he's nodding his head. It's very small, very slight, but the head nod, if you're using both hands, is what you do. Beautiful, Tristan, he's got the gray shirt and the black hat on. Yeah, copy. Sweet child of mine. Coming up. Just like you were saying. We all know she's day night, head up. Don't you love the crane creaking? Do you handle being up way, way up there with the crane creaking like that? Not Coming only up, does what? it creak like that. No. Up but me. Did you handle being up there with the crane creaking like that? Not only does it creak, but as I take the weight, I lean forward. I the entire me. crane starts pointing down towards the ground. Because <laughs> they're actually not flat, they actually point up quite a bit when they don't have any weight. But if you have lots of weight on, like 10,000 pounds of concrete, you start to slowly look down. Absolutely incredible machines though, let me tell you. It is a pleasure to drive. You know, Look at those hand signals, absolutely beautiful. And hold. Hold, you know, it can be a, a slash with the hand across, a stop, or it can, some guys do the closed fist. You need to know both if you're an operator because you never know what you're going to get. Now he's saying down, 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 hold. Essentially, you see the down, 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 down. As soon as something changes, you just hold. Even if you're wrong, it doesn't matter. You're holding, so all things good. When in doubt, you hold. Yeah, they're pouring here. They're figuring out what needs to happen. It's actually really hard. Like you would think you could just kind of pour all the concrete in this one void and it would just kind of spread out in between all these rebar zones, but it really doesn't. It's hard to move the concrete once it's placed. So you actually want to point uh, the chute directly into these rebar zones and then uh, it makes vibrating the concrete and filling up all those voids that much easier. Holy... This is a test for my patience, huh? Since Thanks for I'm watching. Dad. Please like and subscribe. Patience.